How to delegate the right way. The art of delegation. This is the topic of today's video. Let's get into it. Most small business owners or mediocre entrepreneurs, me included when I was younger, you know, it's something that you need to work on constantly. Well, they think that they know everything and they, they can do everything and anything the best out of everyone, right? They think they're the smartest. They think that if they want to do it right, they have to do it alone, which is obviously a mistake. Millionaire entrepreneurs and millionaires in general understand that they don't know everything and that they need a lot of help to reach and build their goals. So in this video, I want to talk about how to delegate the right way, when to delegate, what to delegate, what not to delegate, and a few tips in general about delegation that I think will help a small entrepreneur or a small business owner to grow even further. Stay tuned for the rest of the video to check out all the tips. All right, let's first start with a few tips, a few tips on what to delegate, right? There are certain things that you must delegate that you need to delegate and there are certain things that maybe you don't need to delegate. Let's start with what to delegate. Number one, stuff you can't do delegate right that's pretty obvious but if you can't do something or at least not do it on a competent level delegate it delegate it right when i first started my first blog my business media company i wrote all articles myself i i wasn't a great writer but i learned on the go i had no choice right it was a small business it was a one blog started by me from scratch i had no money to hire writers like I do now. So I did it all by myself. But after some time when I grow, grew and I realized that maybe someone can do this better than me, I decided to delegate. So obviously, you know, I wouldn't do my own accounting. There's stuff that I can't do right from the bat, right? I'm trying to build this YouTube video now. I can't edit. I'm not that great at editing videos. I delegated, I hired an editor, right? So stuff you can't do, obviously delegate it. All right, the second tip on what to delegate, the art of delegation is delegate stuff that are not worth your time. This is maybe, uh, let's say you're great at sales, right? You're a perfect salesman. You can do cold calls all day long and close deals. So there are a lot of stuff that are not worth your time and your time is better spent on actual actually selling right so you gotta figure out how much an hour of your time is worth and if you have a task that is worth less than your time then delegate it right you don't want to do stuff that is worth less than your time don't lower your worth right so at the beginning like i said i wrote all articles on my business because it was worth my time i have nothing but the minute that i start earning money the minute that my time was worth more that's when i started to look at maybe hiring some writers and it made sense once my site or at that point was a multiple sites was making enough money for me that my time is worth somewhere else that's the right time to delegate. When your time is worth more than the task that you need to do, delegate it to someone else. All right, the next tip I wanna talk about what to delegate is, uh, from my own experience, you wanna delegate very specific tasks. You, don't, you wanna be very clear on what you want to accomplish and what you wanna do. Maybe even have a manual or like a guidebook that you can give to the person that you are hiring to do the task instead of you. So you wanna be very clear. From my experience, if you're not clear on your goals, if you're not clear on the task at hand, many people will just do it as they think it should be done and maybe missing miscommunication there and maybe it won't happen exactly as you want it. You're the business owner, you're the CEO, you need to know how you want it to be done. And when you delegate a task, you gotta be very clear about how you want things to be. All right, tip number four, when it's, a, when it's the right time, hire a project manager. And what I mean by that, a project manager, it's a very general term, but it's basically just someone to manage the project instead of you, right? Makes sense, but it could be a lot of things. For me personally, hiring an editor is kind of like a project manager, right? 
at the beginning when I started scaling, I did everything myself. I, when I started hiring other writers, I managed those writers. I was the project manager. After some time, when I scaled even more, I hired a project manager, which is my editor, right? The editor handles all the writing team, handles pretty much everything that's related to content on a media business, but it could be very different things. If you have a shop, right? If you have a body shop, a project manager can be the one, the person between you and all the employees and all the mechanic people and he's the one who actually manages them and making sure everyone is doing their job and he reports to you. This saves you time and on the long term saves you money because you now have more time to focus on higher level tasks, right? So when it's the right time, don't rush it. Don't do it too quickly because project managers are not low level employees. They usually have certain skills that will cost you. Hands down, they are, they are worth it. But when it's the right time, hire a project manager to kind of replace you as a project manager and then you free up a lot of your time to focus on higher level goals. Talked about a few things that about what to delegate and how to do it right. Now I want to talk about a few things that you should not delegate, right? There are certain things in a business that I think you should not delegate. It's not only me personally, you know, there's a lot of uh, gurus and successful entrepreneurs who probably say the same things. So the first thing I think you should not delegate is high level acquisitions or expenses. Every business has expenses. Every business has high expenses. Certain things should be left to the CEO, to the business owner. A lot of other things may not be depending, depending on where you are in your journey. But let's say for you, for your business, a $10,000 expense is considered a high level expense. And anything below that number, let's say $5,000, $3,000, you can say, you know what, I have guys who are handling it, I have a CFO, I have someone else, my partners maybe, that can handle those decisions. If they want to buy something like a service or develop something and it costs $3,000, they don't need my permission. But if it costs more than $10,000, I'm making that decision. You want to you bring it to me. You want to bring me some options and I'll decide if it's worth it for the business or not. And again, it depends on the level of your uh, journey and your business. But, you know, the same logic works with a million dollar expense or with a $500 expense, right? If you're just starting out and you have a small business, obviously, sometimes $500 is a major expense and you want to make that decision. So. As, as you grow, as you level up, you want to make sure that on one side, you're not wasting time on small level decisions like 100 bucks, 500 bucks expenses. But on the other hand, you don't want to, uh, you know, lose too much control and let someone else decide on expenses that can potentially hurt your business if they're not the correct one. So you got to take that responsibility at least at the beginning, at least, you know, until you can manage to have a CFO or someone else who is really responsible about those things. And I will say on a personal level, not even at those levels, right? Some expenses, some high level expenses should be done by the CEO, by the owner. I'll give you another example. Uh, in my business, we acquire websites, right? We acquire our publishers. I make the, de the decisions about what to acquire when to acquire and how much is going to cost. These are high level decisions that in a media company, the CEO needs to decide. All right. The second thing I think that you should not delegate is the vision for the company, the vision for the brand. You're the CEO, you started a business, you know where it's going, you know what your dreams are, and you should be the one to kind of push the business in the right direction. So this is something that I think it's very important not to delegate because you can't have someone else dream for you, right? I love that sentence. You can't have someone else dream for you. You have your own dreams. You have your own goals inside your hands, head that you want to execute. That's, the, that's your job. That's your part as the CEO, as the business owner. You need to plan the vision and kind of spread it around your culture and your company and push everyone forward towards your vision. That's something that no one else can do for you. I touched about what to delegate. We touched about what not to delegate. Now let's talk about 
when to delegate. There's a co correct time in a company's life and every task's life that needs to be delegated or not. And let's quickly talk about that. Number one, when you're obsessive about something, when it consumes you, when you find that you spend a lot of time doing it and you're doing it very well, but it still takes up a lot of your time, teach someone else how to do it. If he's doing it at 80%, 80% level from what you can do it, that's great. Hold on to them because nothing's going to be perfect. And most of the time, no one is going to do something as good as you as the business owner, as unless it's a very specific skill that you're actually not good at. But let's say you're very good at what you do. So even if you find someone and you teach them, you train them and they reach a level of 80% from from what you can do, that's great. You know, hire another one, teach them, rinse and repeat. From my own personal experience, again, uh, for many years at the first, at the beginning, you know, I wrote all articles on all my sites and it was hard to let go of control. I figured no one can write as good as I can and I still think no one can write as good as I can, but most people can write good enough, right? And obviously some people can write better than me, that's obviously, but you know, as long as I can find someone who can write as good enough, that's good enough to scale. You have to let go, don't be obsessive, don't obsess too much about tasks. You know, it's good to obsess at the beginning because you want to reach a high level of knowledge about what you're doing, but don't obsess too much. If you're too obsessive, that's a perfect time to delegate and let it go. All right, the second tip about uh, when to delegate is when you're not growing as fast or as you thought you would. So again, when I first started, you know, I grew very nicely from the beginning. It took a long time, but at some point, you know, you stagnate and you start to question why, why am I not growing at the pace that I'm supposed to or the pace that I know I can and a lot of times you got to look you got to take a step back and look at your organization and your structure and try to figure out what is the reason that you're stuck a lot of times it could be you a lot of times it could be tasks that you're not delegating or that someone else can do better than the person who's currently doing them or better than you and that will free up your time to scale the business, right? As the business owner, as the CEO, you have to think about the business as a whole and not just on specific tasks. And once you free yourself, you can generally scale the business. So if you're not growing as fast as you want, take a step back, try to figure out what tasks can I delegate? How can I free up more of my time or the other people's time that can make high level decisions? To help the business grow even further. All right, the third uh, tip about when to when to delegate a task is I think we touched on it and it makes a lot of sense. But you know I'm just gonna say it again: when your time or when your employee's time who's doing that task is simply not worth it anymore, right? If you're doing it and you just grown and your business is is bigger now, so your time is needed elsewhere and you do a task that's not worth your time, that's not a good idea. You want to delegate that task and you want someone else to do it. But if you have someone else already doing it, but they grow, right? You want to grow your employees. You don't want to keep them down. So if they develop and they grow into the job and they outgrown it, now their time is not worth the task anymore. You should delegate it to someone else, maybe push up that employee and give him higher level of decision making. That's the perfect time to delegate. And I think in a healthy organization, that's exactly what you want to do. You want your employees to grow and develop as persons and keep leveling, level them up, leveling. Yeah, it's very hard to pronounce this word. You want to level them up as they develop and grow because everybody will win. That's a win-win situation when you have employees that grow with you. All right, we touched about what to delegate, we touched about what not to delegate. Also, we talked about when is the right time to delegate. Now, I wanna give you a few general tips about delegation. Uh, these are from my own personal experience. And obviously, everything that I talked about in my videos is just for my two cents, you know, my personal experience with, with my businesses. Uh, obviously, there's no rule, there's no like one thing that fits every business. 
So just gonna like take whatever you can from this video and I hope you gain any value from it. By the way, maybe comment below on this video about the things that you struggle with in your business or the things that you want you are struggling right now and you want a solution for that's related to delegation or letting go of control and i will gladly comment and help you out so now i want to talk about general tips of delegation right so number one you gotta hire right right huh sounds funny you gotta hire right right um don't put the wrong person do at the wrong task at the wrong job right you wouldn't hire a developer usually you wouldn't hire a developer to do sales calls right it just doesn't make sense it doesn't compute developers are usually not that great at sales calls you know unless it's a very specific situation when your product is very technical and they have the knowledge and they have experience with sales but most of the times you gotta make sure you put the right person doing the right task. That's what it means to hire right. If you have a specific task, try to find someone specific for that task. The second thing I wanna talk about in general tips of delegation is you gotta micromanage at first. And I'm emphasizing the word first at first at the beginning. You gotta get it right. It will be worth it long term. So when you first hire someone to do a specific task, you delegate it, right? You're already on your way to scaling. You gotta train them, right? Even if they have knowledge about what they want, about what you want them to do, you gotta train them to do the things like you want them. Every business has little nuances and little things that they do differently from other businesses. And you wanna train that person to do it the right way for your business. So at first, you gotta micromanage. At first, you gotta manage them and it seems like it's not saving you time, right? The whole point of delegation is saving you time. At the end of the day, you know, it will be worth it long-term if you can teach them to do it the right way and once it clicks, once they do it like you want them to do, then your time is actually free and you can do other stuff. All right, the, the third tip about general tips on delegation is related to the, to the second round about the micromanaging. So you got to let go of control, right? You got to let go of control. I mean, it's obviously it's related to everything I talked about, but when you're obsessive about something, you don't want to lose control. You think I'm the only one who can do this. That's a mistake. You got to let go of control when you delegate. You got to let go of it. You got to trust the person that's doing his job that it's gonna do it the best that he can. Like I said before, at first you gotta micromanage, you gotta train and teach them how you want things to be done. But once you trust them, and once you have a level of confidence that they can do the task, 80% level of what you can do or at a level that satisfies you, let them go. Let them go, just, just leave it, just leave it. Let it go, let them do their thing. Don't micromanage them. You know, results speaks for themselves. If they do a good job, you will see it. If they don't do a good job, you will also see it. And then you just got to replace them. So once you reach a level of trust, don't micromanage. Let go of control. When you, re when you let go of control, that's the biggest feeling in the world because you can actually see your business scale. That's, you, gotta, you can actually see it. Okay, the last tip I want to... I wanna say about how to delegate like a successful entrepreneur is you gotta be a leader lead don't manage you gotta try i know this is very hard to do this is very hard to do even for me most of the time but you gotta try and be a leader for your organization and not just a boss and not just a manager you're the business owner you're the one with the vision you gotta push the company forward you gotta put the ideas that you have in your head in your employees head you got to make everyone excited about what they're doing you don't want to just shout commands at people and work them to death right you got to be a leader try and inspire other people try to motivate other people in you know every business has its own ways to motivate people but you got to try and motivate people to do their jobs on the best side that they possibly can. That's kind of like my two cents on how to delegate the right way, 
how to delegate like millionaire entrepreneurs and all that stuff and if you gain value from this video make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can check out my latest videos also hit the like button you don't know how much that helps on the youtube algorithm and i'll see you as always on the next video